All right, let's dive right in, shall we? Today, we're taking a close look at electrocardiograms, but not just any ECG patterns. Right, we're focusing on the subtle ones, the ones that can sometimes be missed but could point to a serious heart issue. Exactly, occlusion myocardial infarction, or OMI for short. Basically, a major blockage in one of the heart's arteries, and it's not something you want to mess with. Yeah, definitely not something to ignore. So, time is of the essence here. And, you know, doctors used to mainly rely on ST segment elevation on ECGs to diagnose this. But research has evolved, and we're learning that there are other clues, these subtler signs hidden in the ECG, that can help us catch OMI much earlier. So it's like we're becoming ECG detectives looking for those hidden messages. Precisely. And believe me, some of these patterns have fascinating names, almost like code words. We're talking Wellen syndrome, de winter pattern. There's even a South African flag sign. Indeed. And these patterns actually show us that our approach to acute coronary syndrome is shifting. Relying only on ST segment elevation to diagnose can be misleading. Studies have shown that up to 34% of cases that initially look like NSTEMI, meaning no ST segment elevation, well, might actually involve an occlusion. Exactly. And that's a significant number of potential misdiagnoses we want to avoid. Right. Absolutely. So let's break down some of these patterns. We've got subtle ST elevation, which I'm guessing is not as dramatic as the classic STEMI. You're right. It's subtle. It refers to cases where the ST segment is elevated, but maybe by less than one millimeter. Easy to overlook if you're not specifically looking for it. Exactly. It's all about the details. Look for any elevation, no matter how small, especially in the leads that correspond to the area of the heart we're concerned about. So even a tiny blip could be a warning sign. You got it. And then there's Wellen syndrome. That one sounds a bit ominous. Well, this one's interesting. It often appears after the chest pain has gone away. Imagine a patient comes in with chest pain, but by the time they get an ECG. The pain subsided. So they might think they're in the clear. Right. But the ECG might be showing deeply inverted T waves in leads V2 and V3. It's like an echo of the blockage that happened earlier. Almost like the heart is trying to tell us, hey, something happened here. Don't ignore me. Precisely. It's a silent warning sign we can't afford to miss. All right, so we've got subtle ST elevation, Wellen syndrome, both potentially easy to miss. What about hyperacute T waves? Now, these are like a surge of electrical activity in the heart. Imagine the T wave, which is normally a gentle curve on the ECG. Suddenly becoming huge, like towering over the QRS complex. Exactly. It's not just a regular big T wave. It's exaggerated, a sign that the heart muscle is under stress. And we need to act fast. Exactly. What about the de Winter pattern? Ah, the de Winter pattern. It's unique because it combines different ST changes. Think of it like a roller coaster. An upward sloping ST depression, followed by tall symmetrical T waves. Okay, so far so good. And then you also get ST elevation in lead AVR. So it's a whole pattern, not just one change. Right. And this particular combination usually points to a blockage in the LAD, the left anterior descending artery. The LAD, sometimes called the Widowmaker, because it supplies such a large portion of the heart. That's the one. So recognizing this pattern can be critical. Definitely. What other patterns should we be aware of? Well, there's one called Aslanger's pattern, and it's almost like a mirror image of those typical blockage patterns we usually see. A mirror image. How so? Well, think about it. Instead of ST elevation in the leads where we typically expect it, Aslanger's pattern shows, get this, Isolated ST elevation in lead three, but depression in the other leads. So it's like the ECG is flipped around. You could say that. And we often see this pattern in people who have multiple blockages in their coronary arteries. And speaking of patterns with interesting names, have you heard of the South African flag sign? No, that's a name you don't forget easily. What makes it look like a flag? Well, if you look at leads I, AVL, and V2, You'll see ST elevation there, but then ST depression in lead three. And if you picture it, it resembles the colors of the South African flag. Exactly. It's almost like a map guiding us to the problem area. And this usually points to the left circumflex artery. That's right. Then there are these more technical sounding ones like new onset by fascicular block. What's going on there? That one's all about the electrical pathways of the heart. By fascicular block means there's a disruption in how electrical signals travel through two of the three main pathways. And when this happens suddenly? Especially with chest pain. Big red flag. It's not just about ST segments and T waves anymore. It's about understanding how any change in the electrical system could be a sign of OMI. Right, it all connects. Okay, so what about posterior OMI? Is that one of the tougher ones to catch? It can be. You see, the standard 12-lead ECG doesn't always show it clearly. So it's almost hidden. In a way. 
Posterior OMI means there's a blockage in the artery supplying the back wall of the heart. We might see some subtle ST depression in leads V1 to V3. But sometimes you need to add more leads to get the full picture. Exactly. We call them posterior leads. Like we need a special lens to see what's happening back there. I like that analogy. So what about this terminal QRS distortion I've heard about? What makes it stand out? Ah, yes. That one presents as a kind of notched or slurred appearance at the very end of the QRS complex. A very specific change in the shape. And this is unique to OMI. Pretty much. You almost never see terminal QRS distortion in benign conditions. It's one of the most specific indicators we have. Wow, that's pretty definitive. But I imagine things get even more complicated when someone already has other heart rhythm issues. Oh, absolutely. It's like trying to find a whisper in a noisy room, like with left bundle branch block, a type of conduction abnormality. Those folks already have ST segment changes that could look like OMI. Exactly. So how do we tell the difference? Well, that's where the modified scarbosis smith criteria come in. Modified scarbosis smith criteria. That sounds pretty intense. Think of them as a set of rules to help us sort through the noise and pinpoint the ECG features that really suggest OMI, even with a pre-existing bundle branch block. Like a filter to help us focus. That's a good way to put it. And these criteria have really improved the accuracy of OMI diagnosis in these challenging situations. It's incredible how much information is packed into those lines on the ECG. It really is a language of its own. Are there any other patterns we should be aware of? Two more I'd like to mention. First, the precordial swirl. The name kind of gives it away. ST elevation and depression swirling around on the ECG. Pretty much. This one usually points to a blockage in the proximal LED, meaning before it branches off. So we're catching it early. You could say that. And finally, there's northern OMI, a newer pattern. We mostly see it in people with multiple blockages, a specific set of ST changes that can lead to faster treatment if we recognize them. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground, all these different ECG patterns that could indicate OMI. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of OMI and those often overlooked ECG patterns. We hope you learned something that can help you take charge of your heart health. We'll see you next time on The Deep Dive for another fascinating exploration of the world of medicine and health. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.